Oh, hey, everybody. Hey, hey, Brian, Brian, What's up? guess What's who's up? here? The San Leandro High School Computer Science class. Everybody, this is Brian Tong. Hey, Brian. Hey, guys. Hey, oh, hey. What's, up, hey what's up, guys? Hey, hey what's up, man? Yeah, cool. He looks a lot taller on the internet. Oh my god. Whoa, whoa. Brian. Yo. Brian. Yeah. I'm your biggest fan of all time. Cool. And I'm like, cool. I've seen every single Apple Vi that you've done, every Google issue. Yeah, that's like, cool. That's you're rubbing my hand weird. That's yeah. kinda weird, Nate. But your hands are so soft. Okay. Um Carlos? Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll see you over there in the room. Just I'll I'll catch you later, okay man? Yeah. I love you. Cool. What's going on? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Buy for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. And yes, there will be a bad Apple. On to the show and the latest from French website iGen claims an Apple event will take place in the last week of February. Apple is expected to showcase the Apple Watch with a few more apps and features, but also the new 12-inch MacBook Air rumored to debut in March. So a February announcement would make sense with that timeline. Rumored features include a fanless design with a revamped trackpad, and it may be the first Apple device to take advantage of the new reversible USB Type-C connector. But again, this is all speculation right now. All right, a lot of you have been asking, what's going on with Apple's Beats music service? And the latest from 9to5Mac details aspects of the new upcoming service. You'll still have to pay, but Apple will reportedly be taking over the look and feel, giving it that Apple design aesthetic, while Beats technologies and music content will be deeply integrated into iOS, iTunes, and Apple TV. The report also says that Apple has settled on a price of $7.99 per month. That would make it cheaper than the $9.99 plans from Spotify, RDO, Rhapsody, and Google, but still more expensive than Pandora's $4.99 ad-free plan. Apple planned to announce the streaming service as early as March, but it looks like June is a more realistic target at the Worldwide Developers Conference. All right, Recode has confirmed that frenemy Samsung will be responsible for manufacturing the A9 chip for Apple's next-gen iPhone and iPad. Samsung has seen its profits dwindle the past few quarters in its mobile division, thanks primarily to Apple and others, but its semiconductor business has also helped balance out those losses. The A9 processor has been expected to be packed inside the rumored iPad Pro, set to release sometime this year as well. BGR sources say Apple won't be releasing iOS 8.2 until March. It's already out for developers in beta format, and the biggest difference is built-in support for the Apple Watch. Now, multiple reports claim Apple has asked some of their high-profile developers working on Apple Watch apps to have them ready by mid-February. Most likely so, they can test how much battery life these third-party apps actually use over time. All right, we know the luxurious Apple Watch Edition will be going for a pretty penny, and there's still been no word on pricing for their 18-karat gold timepiece, but Apple is reportedly planning specific features to their stores to accommodate the gold watches. 9to5Mac reports they will be acting more like jewelry stores by outfitting their retail spots with safes in the back that will be custom designed with MagSafe chargers that will not only hold units for sale, but demo units that will be on the floor for charging overnight. Apple's plan is to have customers try on the watches in-store with all the different band options, and some locations have already begun installing the safes ahead of its April release. Also, Apple is working on special weight scales if people return the gold Apple Watch editions to make sure no gold has been removed prior to replacement or returning them. So you won't be able to spray paint that Apple Watch Sport a gold color because I know you people are out there. Now in things to see, there have been multiple reports of a mystery van equipped with an apparatus on top with multiple cameras, but it's not from Google. It's a minivan leased by Apple. One theory could be Apple is possibly working on their own mapping project since the Apple van is equipped with 12 cameras on top where Google Street View cars use a total of 15. And filming for Sony's Steve Jobs movie is underway and here's the first peek at Michael Fassbender as SJ and Seth Rogen as Waz from the Daily Mail from their recent shoot at Cupertino's Flint Center. Now Fassbender looks nothing like Steve and Seth Rogen has a slightly more believable Waz look but it still isn't close. The only encouraging thing is that Aaron Sorkin is behind this so I will hold my judgment for now and the Steve Jobs biopic is set to hit theaters on October the 9th. And yes, there is a bad apple we need to address. See, on last week's show, many of you pointed out that we used dollar signs incorrectly when revealing the number of iPhones, Macs, and iPads sold. So, I wanted to handle this internally, 
and make sure it won't happen again. Mitchell, Mitchell Chang, can you get over here? Get over here, all right? Now, Mitch is the producer of the show. He did all the editing, and Mitch, do you have anything to say? Anything. I'm sorry for putting dollar signs on units. And? And it won't happen again. That's right, it won't. All right, well, thank you, Mitch. I appreciate that, but you know what? You're still getting a bad apple. So eat it. Eat it. Whoa. Eat it. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh. Now get out of my face. See, we hold people accountable here. All right. That's going to do it for this week's show. And before we go, I wanted to send out a special thanks to Mr. Burke and all of the students over at San Leandro High School's computer class, so maybe I should hold it the right way, that came out to visit at CNET Studios. All right, guys. You can always email me at theapplebyte at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong, and I'll respond when I'm getting my eyebrows threaded. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple. So then I told her, that's not guacamole. <laughs> oh man. And then it was like up and down like a roller coaster. I like threw up. <laughs> so then she told me, it's you, not me. What does that mean? All right, so then the next movie you do is you go from here to here. From here to here. He's still short. You got that? Yeah. Okay. All right, um, next question. Hey, Kevin, what's up? Hey, Brian, I've got a question. So I've been working on this Java program, right? It's just a simple calculator, not really too much to it. Well, you know how 1 plus 1 is supposed to be 2, and 2 plus 2 is supposed to be 4, and 5 times 7 is supposed to be 35? Well, when I actually go to test the Java program, 1 plus 1 turns out to be 7, and 2 plus 2 turns out to be 35, and 7 times 5 is 105, and when I run the methods, nothing's working, and I don't know. Wow. Wow. Hey, huh? Brian? Huh? Brian. Yeah? Yeah? He, he's done. Yeah. He's done with this question. Okay. So, yeah, as I was saying, you know, life is like, like Flappy Bird, right? You have these, these ups and these downs and sometimes you don't know where to go and it's just up to you to just, just keep on tapping, you know? Keep on pushing through life. Tap, tap, tap away and follow your dreams and you know, you'll, you'll get there. Any other questions? This dude's an idiot. My grandma knows more than he does, and she's from the 30s.